Ryan Jarrell here for All Access MMA, and my next guest will fight this Saturday against Devontae Smith in Las Vegas. And, of course, it's Justin Janes on the show. Hey, man, I'm doing good, man. Just uh, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Hey, it's my pleasure, and I know we're all excited to see you step back into the uh, octagon here this weekend. Uh, but this fight literally just happened. I, it was just on Tapology uh, earlier today. When did you find out uh, about this opportunity? Uh, I heard there was an opening on Friday. Uh, you know, we tossed around the idea, and, uh, you know, I, I'm game. I'm always ready to fight, and I'm ready to go fucking knock Devontae's head off Saturday, man. It, it is what it is, dude. I'm a dog. I fight. So, yeah, it's been uh, – I think it was either Friday or Saturday is when we confirmed it. And obviously, I mean, as a professional mixed martial artist in the UFC, you know, training camp is year round. How has how has training been for you recently? Uh, have you been really in camp preparing for someone of Devante's style or just tell me a little bit about how that preparation has been there? You know, I I've just been I've just been training, honestly, like I, I haven't really been training for a fight. I haven't been, you know. I just been doing my strength conditioning at the PI, work doing doing a lot of grappling as of late, just trying to trying to keep my weight low. Uh, I really haven't picked up the pace uh, to 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 jump into a fight. You know, I really didn't plan to fight till April, but hey, it is what it is, man. When the UFC calls, they knock on the door. I answer every time, in shape, out of shape, one day notice, three week three week notice. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna show up. Now, uh, you, you had a, an unbelievable debut earlier in 2020, uh, big knockout victory. Since then, you've dropped your last two fights. How difficult has that been as far as the, the mental aspect of it to, to kind of come back, get back on the horse after suffering those setbacks? Hey, you know, I like to compare myself to like, a, you know, an all-star quarterback, you know, particularly Brett Favre, for instance. Man, this guy's slinging shots all the way, 100-yard bombs down the field. He throws an interception, brushes it off his shoulder, and he steps back onto the field the next one. I'm a competitor. Obviously, I want to win. Obviously, I'm giving it everything I have, but I can't let those setbacks hold me back. So, you know, up and up, and, you know, I'm looking to throw another touchdown this this fight. So I love the football analogy, so I got to get your pick. The Super Bowl is this Sunday, so who are you leaning towards? You know what? Tom Brady is 10th Super Bowl appearance. Uh, as a Buccaneer, at home, Tom Brady's taking this for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. I, you probably can't tell. I'm not a Brady fan or anything like that. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah right yeah go figure uh, as far as those those losses uh obviously tucker benitez is there anything in particular that you can point to was there something that you had uh, that you suffered in camp or is there any i mean i know you're not gonna make any excuses but is there anything that you can point to as like a lesson learned moving forward you know uh i i ran my mouth a lot and i still do because that's what i do uh, but you know, my, my, the, the goal I like to live by, or, or the words I like to live by is I'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. With that being said, cutting down to 145 in three weeks, uh, I lost, you know, 35 pounds in three weeks. Uh, it just expired my gas tank, man. You know, G Gavin Tucker is one of, if not the best fighter I've ever fought, or definitely one of them, you know, and, and he's always in shape and he's, that's the first time I've ever made 145 pounds since I was in ninth grade high school, you know? So, you know, when and if I go back to featherweight, I need more prep time. As for Benitez, you know, my biggest thing there was ego. You know, I, I everyone always talks about, oh, this guy's, you know, an incredible kickboxer. And instead of thinking, all right, what can I do to work around that? My game plan was fuck him and his kickboxing. I'm a good kickboxer, too. I'm going to knock this guy out. So, you know, I guess if there is a lesson learned there, you know, try to put my ego aside, maybe a little bit better of game plan, maybe implement my wrestling against such a good striker like him. Uh, with that being said, I want exciting fights. And, you know, I say this now, but if I fought, if I fought what, uh, Gabriel again, I'd probably do the same thing, try and knock his head off before he knocked mine out. Uh, they're just, those are minor setbacks, you know, to, to, the, to the big picture that, you know, I'm going to take a big leap forward here and I plan on knocking Devontae Smith out next week or this weekend. Yeah, I'm definitely really excited for for this showdown uh, come Saturday night. When you look at 2020, obviously it's been a, a really weird year. It's affected everyone a little bit differently. You know, you were one and two inside the octagon. I know you're a proud father. Uh, you also like hunting. Like, wh how, what was 2020 like for you? Do, are you going to look back on it and, and smile, or, or are you happy to, to be now in 2021? You know, I I mean, there, as with everything, there's the highs and lows. Obviously. Knocking Frank Camacho out in 40 seconds is the number one best and biggest thing that's ever happened in my life, bar none. Nothing is is comparable to that. You know, that's we're talking about the highest high. Now I've taken two losses in a row. Now that put me at the lowest low. You know, 2021's a new year. I'm coming out slinging. I'm remo. I'm or I shouldn't say remotivated because I'm always motivated. But you know, I, I'm refocused, and uh, we're gonna see what happens Saturday night on a week notice fight. 
Are you, are you, have you had a chance to, to do any hunting or anything like that? I mean, I know that's what you like to do on the side. Uh, that must, I guess, relax you and, and kind of keep you focused throughout camp. Is that something you've had a chance to do while you're in Vegas? Yeah, dude, that's all I do, man. It's, I fight so I can afford my hunting and fishing trips. Hell, right after this, where right after this fight, I'm already planning a trip down to Mexico to do some fishing. Uh, you know, I flew my son out from Michigan uh, to Nevada in December. We went elk hunting. We shot an elk. Uh, you know, I shot a, a nice, uh, nice big whitetail last year. My son shot his first deer last year at 11 years old. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's hunt, hunting never stops, man. You know, we, we've been doing a lot. Of, I've been uh, doing a lot of mountain lion hunting over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I really want to back them online by the end of 2021. Man, have you actually seen one before out in the out in the wild? Uh, never when I'm hunting. I've seen two of them uh, while not while I'm not hunting. They're so elusive and they're such an incredible animal. They're so smart. They're 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 majestic, man. And and, and to to hunt one and to and to get one it will, will be another dream come true. Did you see that video of that guy that was, he was out on a trail, I think it was somewhere out west, and that mountain lion, like, was following him for what seemed like forever. Like, if, if you saw yeah. it, like, what would that situation be like for someone like yourself? That would never happen to me because I'd have a firearm and I'd shoot the animals is within five seconds. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, it's shame on, you know, it's, it's an incredible video, uh, but here's the thing. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm assuming, I don't know, but I, I'm sure that guy has zero martial art experience. That mountain lion will kill me and you at the same time, uh, without, without a, a doubt in my mind for him to be on a trail. Out in, I think it was Colorado, uh, without any kind of safety device, even like bear spray to spray at the animal is fucking stupid. And, uh, I hope that he and nobody else ever gets in their situation. I understand nobody, not everyone's pro gun and maybe he's not comfortable with guns, but he needs at least a bear spray because that mountain lion, if it wanted to, could have killed him within 15 seconds without, without even trying. Even even me with a martial arts experience, and I, I like to think I'm relatively tough. I wouldn't stand it. I wouldn't stand 30 seconds, maybe even less, maybe 20 seconds with a mountain lion head. I mean, it, it'll kill you at your own will. What it was doing, what the lion was doing, because I actually did some research on the video, is uh, I, I think at the beginning of the video, uh, a, a kitten comes across the street, and the mom is like defending his kittens, and that's why it didn't kill. He was just tr more trying to get him away. But with that being said, is yeah, if that was me, that that animal would have been dead within within as soon as I saw it, it would have been dead. Yeah, that was a terrifying video. Have you ever been up to New England to hunt? I, I know there's a lot of hunters around my area. Uh, if you haven't, you should definitely come up to Maine because there's plenty of good spots up around here. Hey, man, I love traveling the, uh, the country. I love traveling the world to hunt, man. If you, if you know of any hookups in Maine, you bet your ass I'll be there. I love I love hunting. And, you know, it's not always about killing the animals. It's about the experience. Like me and my son went elk hunting last month, and we get caught in a blizzard, and he's bawling his eyes out. We have 40-mile-an-hour gusts, sleets in our eyes. He's crying, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And you know, I'll ne and I knew we were obviously weren't going to die, but it, it was miserable. And, uh, you know, for the rest of our lives, we're going to remember that. So I, I think we'll almost remember that more than the actual animal that we ended up harvesting. So uh, it's 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 those little stories that, that, that make it worth it for me. Yeah. Uh, anytime you want to come up here, let me know. I, I definitely have a few hookups. Uh, a lot of hunters in my family in general. Oh, yeah. uh, let, let's talk about just these weight classes right now, featherweight versus lightweight. It just seems like each division is just getting better and better and better. When you look at the UFC as a whole right now, what division do you feel like is, is at the top? Uh, I think that the most stacked division, this is biased saying because, you know, I, I, cause I am a featherweight and I lightweight, but it is the featherweight and lightweight. That's why the UFC has to make so many cuts because there's so many people that are, that are thriving to be the best at this position, man. You just, you know, Khabib, you know, he's 29 and 0. You know, like, look, that's that's the champion. Nobody, he's only lost, like, the only he has one controversial, controversial fight, man. You know, and and that's the best. And we got Justin Gaethje, we got Tony Ferguson. You know, uh, featherweight. You know, you got guys up and coming. Dan Hooker, who obviously he just, or that was at lightweight, but Dan Ige is coming up. You know, you got Max. Like, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Like, you know, it, it's hard to even for me to even give a ranking because these guys are so close and. You know, one punch can can swing the scales of ranking uh, in, in any which way just because they're so stacked. How impressed were you by Max Holloway's win over Calvin Cater? You know, man, that was incredible. 450 strikes, you know, like, you know, what I was more impressed by is Cater's toughness. I knew Cater was tough, man, but God damn, did he take a beating, you know, and, and that's off to Holloway to put it on him, you know, and just kept cranking up the pace, cranking up the pace and could not finish him, man. It's you know, hats off to both those guys. I was impressed by both of them. Yeah, no doubt. Volkanovski and Ortega will uh, fight for the belt here soon. Who do you think wins that one? Volkanovski, man. 
We're talking about the champ that's beat Holloway twice. The guy we're talking about, he hasn't beat him once. He beat him twice in a row. To beat a, a, a stud athlete, one of the greatest of all time, featherweights, twice in a row, I mean, they were close, of course, is it says enough in itself. Ortega got a clinic put on by Holloway. I think Volanowski's going to come in and, and whoop his ass. Yeah, I, that wouldn't surprise me at all. And I got to ask you about Connor and that lightweight division. I didn't see that coming. I, I thought if Poirier was going to win that fight, I thought it would be late when Connor's gas tank went. I definitely didn't see him getting finished like that. What's your overall takeaway from, from that fight? And do you feel like Connor is going to get back in the mix soon? He'll go and adjust and, and come back better. I don't think this is why. So Connor, to me, has lost his edge. I saw Dustin taking him into the later rounds and finishing him the third or fourth or fifth, just like you're saying. I did not see it. I, I mean, I bet money. I bet 300 bucks on Dustin at like plus 275. So, you know, I made a little coin off it. But here's the thing. Connor's persona has changed. It's 180. He was the nice guy. They're, they're rubbing each other's backs before the fight. Connor's edge was when he could get into his opponent's head. When he would get into Aldo's head and he's taking his belt off the table and getting Aldo flustered or getting, you know, Diaz flustered, throwing water and shit. He's lost that. He's done with that. You know, I don't know if the UFC's asked him to, like, get away from that, that circus show, but that was his edge. He was able to get people like Dustin when he knocked him out the first time. Dustin said he didn't have a game plan. He just wanted to hurt Connor. And he said leading up to this fight is my game plan is – this you know so you know i i think connor all this back rubbing you know that connor's been doing with his opponents you know donald cerrone telling him how great he is and blah 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 you know i think he lost his edge i don't think he's gonna win three more fights in the ufc wow well I I, i'm really I don't more fights unless he gets gifted okay well, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen. Uh, he's always must-see TV, so uh, I know it'll be good for the UFC if he is back in the mix. So we'll, we'll see what takes place. Let's talk about this matchup on Saturday with Devontae Smith. He's 10-2. and two. He's coming off a, a round one loss to Kama Worthy. Prior to that, he had two big finishes over Julian Arosa and Dong Young Ma. When you look at this matchup, how do you feel How do you, feel you match up stylistically with, uh, with your opponent? I mean, I'm short. And he's a power puncher, and I'm a power puncher. You know, it's it's the way I look at it. It's an exciting matchup, man. He wants to keep me at range and throw his long strikes, and I want to get inside and and beat up his body and you know get his hands to drop and take his head off. You know, with that being said, he has a similar game plan. You know, he wants to keep me at bay and and pick me apart from the outside and land that big right hand. You know, but here's the thing: with his nine knockouts out of his ten wins, you know, I haven't been knocked out. You know, I you know I, I took a a, a soul taking body shot my last fight, but you can ask Benitez, man, he cracked me as hard as he could. And I just walk it off, man, for, for, for Smith to try to knock me out. Even if I'm not in the greatest shape, it's going to be a tough task for him. And, you know, I, I see, I saw what karma did to him and I, and I see that he's susceptible to being knocked out. I'm not, if uh, Smith knocks me out, I would be more surprised than anything. Um, but with that being said, I'm, I'm hunting for his head and I'm looking for the knockout myself. Do you feel this fight gets out of the first round, or do you feel like, you know, you might end up being dragged into a decision victory here for yourself? Uh, you, you, you never know, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, I hate calling fights. You know, I, I would like, I, I think it's going to get finished first round, win or lose. Um, but if it went to the second or the third, I wouldn't be surprised if that makes sense. You know, yeah. I, you know, he's not used to going into later rounds and, and lately I haven't been either, you know, besides Gavin Tucker, I think I had five first round finishes in a row. Uh, you know, you know, Gavin took me into later rounds, you know, and the weight cut definitely played a factor into that. Uh, you know, and then my last fight, you know, I felt incredible. I was ready to go 25 rounds straight and, you know, uh, Benitez with that, with that soul taking knee to my chest, uh, that fucking sucked. But whether this goes one round or three rounds, I'm there and I'm ready to go. Yeah, well, I'm excited for it. Saturday night can't get here soon enough. Last question for me. I, I follow you on Twitter, Justin Jane's MMA. Uh, you posted something uh, about the fans engaging as to who they'd like to see you fight next. And Jordan Levitt took the top spot. Uh, obviously, you're not looking past your opponent this Saturday. That's all you're, you're focused on now. But, you know, moving forward, uh, how many times are you hoping to compete in 2021? And how would a matchup with Jordan Levitt pan out? Uh, you know, I think Jordan Levitt's an incredible fighter. You know, I think he's done, he's done great. I think he's a showman. Uh, he has the name, you know, when he dances around the ring and stuff for all that silly stuff. But I think it's a great matchup for me. Uh, I don't think he's fought anybody the caliber as I'm fighting. You know, I'm fighting the best fighters in the world. You know, Benita's been in the UFC since 2013, 2014. Uh, uh, Tucker, to me, is one of the best uh, featherweights out there. Uh, I, I think I would be a step up in competition for Jordan Levitt. 
And, uh, you know, I haven't watched any film on him recently, uh, you, you know, especially I'm not going to be obviously this week. Uh, but with that being said, uh, you know, that, that that's a great matchup and, and I'd love to knock his head off. Yeah, well, I'd love to see that matchup as well. Hey, very much appreciate you joining me here on uh, Fight Week. Uh, best of skill come Saturday night. Before I let you go, if you want to plug your social media or uh, anyone you want to thank, the floor is yours. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter, Justin James MMA. Instagram is JAY09MI. Or Facebook, just Justin James. Guys, tune in uh, Saturday. Uh, we're swing, sling a leather. I'm trying to hurt people. <laughs> <laughs>